Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back. In this video, or series of videos, we're going to cover building out our dashboard page, which will include our account page, which is gonna have our user account information, including our photo, our first name, last name information, and our bio that we will be able to update, file, upload, in Next.js using server actions. As always, every video will have a reference article that you can use for code snippets or just if you wanna quickly look stuff up and see if anything that you're missing, you'll be able to check it out in this blog post here. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. So currently, this is what we have. We are able to sign in. Let me say testuser at email.com, testuser and click sign in. And here we have our blank dashboard. We're going to build this out today, but there's a couple of things I wanna show you. So let's go back to our homepage. In previous videos, we took a look how you could use no store function to disable caching and make your page dynamic. And that's exactly what we're doing for our get global page data, which is responsible for our data on our landing page. If I run yarn build, we're going to see that the no store function forces us to use dynamic rendering. If you haven't removed it yet, let's go ahead and remove it completely. And let's rerun yarn build again. You're gonna see that now all of our pages were generated statically. And this is what Next.js is going to try to do by default. In our application, we're going to have a lot of dynamic content so by using certain functions, it's going to automatically opt out from the static generation. And this is something that we'll see as we continue going through this video and something that I want you to be aware. But with that being said, let's jump in and continue. Let's start by navigating to our source folder, app folder, and inside our dashboard, we're going to create a new file called layout.tsx. This layout is going to be responsible for our navigation view on the left and displaying our main content on the right. In the description of the video, you're going to find the link to this blog post. We're going to go ahead and find this snippet for our layout.tsx file. Go ahead and copy it and let's import it here in our layout.tsx file. Taking a look at the file, we have our left navigation that you could explore a little bit farther, but it's just basic links and we also have our main for our children. So we're basically using grid and on the left, we're going to have our navigation and on the right, we're going to have our main view. So with this change, let's take a look at our UI. Now, if you navigate to our dashboard, we should see this layout. We have our navigation on the left and we have our main area on the right. So now let's work on moving our logout button to our navigation. And more importantly, let's make sure that if the user is logged in, it's gonna show the user name. And if the user is not logged in, it's going to show the sign in button. So let's do that now. Let's navigate to our components and custom, and we're going to open up our header. And here, what we wanna do, we want to render this button conditionally based on the logged in user. In order for us to check if the user is logged in, in data.services, we have a function called get user me data, which will go ahead and get the logged in user from Strapi. So let's go ahead and use it. Back in our header file, let's go ahead and import get user me loader. Perfect. And let's scroll down to our component and let's go ahead and use it here. And here, when we're logged in, you could see that we have user and within the user, we have a key called okay. If it's true, that means we have a user. So what we could do is we could say, if user dot okay, let's go ahead and show our user. And if not, let's go ahead and show our button. So now taking a look at our dashboard, we could see our user here. Wouldn't be nice if we could display the username instead of hard coding it and the logout button. So let's go ahead and make that change now. In the blog post that's attached to the description in this video, you're going to find this logged in user component. Go ahead and copy it. Inside our front end, right before our header, let's go ahead and import it. We need to import the logout button. So let's go ahead here and do import 
logout button. And that's gonna come from at components custom logout button. Perfect. Our logged in user component takes our user data and we'll go ahead and display the username. And if you click on the username, it's going to redirect us to the account page, which we yet haven't created. But let's go ahead and use this component. So scrolling down here, let's replace this hard coded user with our logged in user component and we're going to pass in the user data. So now taking a look at our front end, we could see our username and the logout button. If I log out, we're going to be redirected back to our homepage with the sign in button. If I click on the sign in, it's gonna take us back to the sign in page. And when I sign back in again, test user, Notice that we redirected back to the dashboard and now we see our username and our logout button. That is pretty awesome. So now let's go ahead back to our summarize page and let's update here. When we are logged in, instead of showing the sign in button, go ahead and show us a link to go to our dashboard. Let's do that next. So now let's navigate to our components custom and go inside our hero section. Because we're using server components, each component could be responsible for its own data. So what we wanna do is conditionally render either the link to sign in or we wanna render our redirect to our dashboard. We're going to use that same helper method to get our user data. So on the top here, I'm going to import get user me loader data, something that we're very familiar with. Once we import our get user me loader, let's scroll down here and let's go ahead and use it here. We're going to say const user equals get user me loader. Because we're using React server components, we can put a sync right in front of our function and await our user return. Once we have the user, let's do some conditional link rendering. For instance, if the user is okay, Let's set our link as dashboard. If not, we're going to set it to what we're returning in our data. And finally, let's go ahead, update our link here. Instead of link URL, we're going to replace it with our conditional link. And here we're going to say, if user is okay, go to dashboard, otherwise show the link text. So with these changes made, let's take a look at our front end. Nice, so when we're logged in, we're going to see go to dashboard and we're going to be redirected to the dashboard. If I log out, we're going to see the sign in button. When we click on it, it's gonna take us to sign in. And taking a look back at our code, one question I'm gonna leave to you is when using server React components, this is something you have to think. Should the data be responsible within the component or should you get the data via props? And that's a discussion that you must have in your own mind to decide what best action. But I wanted to do it this way to show you this example. Now, we do have a caveat. For instance, if we take a look at data.service and we look at our get user me data, we're using our auth token, which is using our cookies. And because we're making all these additional requests, this is no longer a static page. So Next.js will automatically convert everything to being dynamic. So now if I run yarn build, once this is completed, and here you could see now that our website is being dynamically rendered. This is not a big deal for us because the nature of our app is very dynamic, but this is something that I wanted you to keep in mind. Here's a cool video you could check out if you Google search five ways to opt out of Next.js caching. You could see here all the different ways you could do it. So whenever you have a dynamic function, it will go ahead and opt us out of caching. So definitely keep this in mind and check out this video. With that being said, we started working on our dashboard and now we have our amazing top navigation that shows our username and the logout button. This means we could later remove this logout button in our dashboard. And finally, we could start working on our account page next. Currently, if we click on it, we're gonna get not found, but this is something we're going to fix in the next video. So I'll see you then.